Hello, everyone. My name is Paige Byrne, and I'm the visual art teacher at Southwest Elementary, a kindergarten through fifth grade school. Today, our focus is going to be taking a look at nature to see and imagine. This lesson covers the Georgia Visual Art Standard, create works of art based on selected themes. Create original works of art that communicate values and opinions and feelings. Create works of art emphasizing multiple elements of art and principles of design. And to create representational, representational works of art from direct observation, like a landscape, a still life, or portrait. And that's what we're going to focus on today, is outdoor landscape. In this lesson, the expectations on in materials are approachable and possible. For the expectations, students, I'd like you to try to complete your work independently, use your mistakes as a new path, and to try your best. For materials, we need a pencil, small paper, could be medium, like eight and a half by 11, like the Xerox paper, or a large nine by 12 paper a pencil and a marker in black. If you have additional materials that you'd like to add to this later, please use them. We're going to take a look at a painting by Henri Rousseau, but here's some facts that you um, might appreciate before we get started. He was a customs officer before becoming a self-taught painter. And we have those people in our world today, like the people that protect our schools. Rousseau claimed that he had no teacher other than nature. He relied on books to practice places that he had never been. Rousseau was also inspired, or he inspired others to apply a touch of imagination to observation. So I think you'll enjoy that part today. Sometimes your mind just thinks of things outside of what you see. So here's the painting I'd like us to take a look at today. It's titled Tropical Forest with Monkeys, and it was painted in 1910, and he used oil on canvas. There's so much to see that I'd like us to break it down into parts, and it's a thinking routine called See, Think, Wonder. So pulling out one of your sheets of paper, I'd like you to write down what you see. And if you're like me, you might say, huh, I see a beautiful day. We do see a beautiful day, but let's pause the video, and you can pause the video, and just stop for a moment and really see. We can see spiky greens, we can see animals, we can see colorful plants. So pause the video and write down what you see. The next part is to write down, I think, I think, and write down what you think on your paper. I think I see several animals up close. I think I see animals way towards the back. And I think it might be morning time. Go ahead now and pause the video and write down what you think. And our last thinking routine is, I wonder write down what you wonder and pause the video each time you try this routine. I wonder if he could hear the animals communicate. I wonder with all of this information what he started first. So let's start sketching everybody. On one of your sheets of paper, you're going to create a chart like this. We want to see low plants on the ground, large for the middle zone, and tall ones for the canopy. We also want to include some of those animals that we just saw in his painting, crawling or hiding, swinging or perching or wrapping, or even soaring. Now, I haven't been to the jungle, maybe you guys have been to the jungle, but it took a little bit of exploring in my own backyard, and I picked some things that I'd like to share with you today. So let's get started. All right. So some of your low plants, I like these spiky ones. I remember seeing the, um, the tiger in one of his paintings kind of creeping, and, or not creeping, but camouflaging himself behind, behind some of these tall, spiky plants. And I'm just thinking of diagonal lines and pointy, um, sorry, diagonal lines and, and pointy tips. And I also remember seeing some of those 
floral leaves. And I just started again with a diagonal line and just started repeating the shape, just like that. And let's take a look at our ideas for the middle ground. And one moment. All right, nice and large for the middle zone. So when I moved to Savannah, I was really excited to see these beautiful ferns and these beautiful, oh gosh, the name is, um, escaped me, but I'll think of it in a minute. And I recognize some of these, these lines in nature. I see a nice diagonal line here coming off of the main stem, and then all of these wavy lines going in and out of the leaf. So you can practice those in your work, and I'll set my plan here, kind of a mini sketches until we get to our big plan. So I've got my diagonal line going, just like that. And then off of these center parts and these veins, I can do my wavy line that goes around, in towards the stem, around and back, all the way. And doing this over and over, you can really fill in that place that you are checking out. And I love this one, too. It reminded me of a firework in the sky. They grow nice and tall, and they're flowy in the breeze. So to draw something like that, start with a nice, strong stem like it has, two parallel lines. Whoops, let me bring that down a little bit. And then you can start, just imagine a firework. Go out, sometimes off the edge of your paper, out, all towards the center, just like that. All right, and just practicing this, everybody. And I'm using a pen now instead of a pencil to make sure that you can see. All right, let's check out what we want for our larger areas. Oop. Oh, yes, where the macaws hang out or the monkeys might swing, swing back and forth, we want some nice tall plants there. So we'll go back. And for our tall area, I was thinking of, oh, bamboo. There's this great painting lesson one day when we do painting together. You can, the brush goes long, short, long, short, long. But if you're drawing it, you can do your parallels, bum, bum, out, out, bum, bum, something like that. So light, nice, long plants that can fill up a space. But for our trees, I think of the letter Y sometimes. Going ahead and drawing a diagonal line, swinging it down, and then following it back to the trunk. All right. So we've got some little practice sketches here in preparation for our big plan. So let's take a look at what our big plan could look like. Aha, all right, I see them coming all together and I see lots of details here and sometimes I even a focus on one looking up close. So to determine how to space this all out, get your larger sheet of paper and let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my nine to 12 sheet of paper, put my plants in the back in the water here. Okay. So when thinking about Henri Rousseau and what he started with first, um, I was thinking about the ground floor. So I want to go ahead and fill that in. So over here in the corner, and I'm going to work my way towards the top of the page. So down at the bottom, and my sketches, I'm going to go switch to my pencil so I can move a little quicker. But my sketches are going to be kind of loose, and I can go back in and refine them later. Fill that in. And I wanted to remember those floral plants coming in. 
We're so fortunate in Georgia, we have access to the ocean, access to the mountains. There's all this different wildlife and plant life out there that you can include. I know in my backyard, there's the stray cat, not a tiger, but a stray cat that keeps coming through. So I think I might draw the head of the cat instead of the whole body to show that he's kind of sneaking around. So here's the back. My head coming out with my ears. Just kind of peeking out behind. A triangular nose with the eyes. How am I doing on time? <laughs> Thank you. All right, and you can add the patterns later, part of his little arm coming through there. All right, let's think about the middle ground here and bring in some of those plants that we practiced. Go ahead and put your wavy line in there. And again, just keep repeating what you've practiced, filling that space in, in the middle ground. And I wanted to add, I didn't practice it with you guys, but I really wanted to, um, I just remembered the anaconda. And he kind of comes in and wraps himself around the tree. His tail might be peeking out, and then his body wraps in front, and then it goes in the back, and it goes up in the front again, it goes behind, and then he can have it coming out kind of wrapped around the tree, all this action that happens. All right, and we'll clean up any mistakes or details that would need to happen. And those monkeys were having a great time swinging from the vine, so I'm going to put towards the top in the canopy a nice big vine. You can add the stems later. I like to have the paws or his paws kind of coming up and gripping onto the tree or the vine and then swinging down. So I think of that line, that wavy line or the letter S to have his body swinging down. And it's important sometimes to check back to your reference or what you're looking at, whether you're outside. So we're gonna do that now. Let's see if I can pick up anything I forgot. Maybe some birds, I think, and perhaps even the florals that are coming up. So, and the rainbow. That would be such a good idea to show what time of day it might be until I can add color. All right. So I'll finish my monkey here. Whoops, his arm is coming in there. His chin is tucked in, and I'll come back later and work on that. All right, so just kind of a gentle suggestion of land in the background. And color will help the rainbow for sure stand out, but for right now, I'm just going to continue to fill in the plants. More of these spikies in the background. Give them a place to hide. And you can just, there's my suggestion of land towards the back. A little bit of a sun. And then maybe these curvy diagonal lines repeating one after another, at least six for the rainbow. One and two and three and four and five and six. Okay, so artists, whether your landscape drawing is inspired from other artists or your own backyard, 
It's a place where you can show your skills, just putting lines and shapes together and also recognizing that you can be up close, as close as this tiger or the cat. You could be walking through, maybe even put like a suggestion of water or a little creek that they might be um, interested in, in going. Or you can be far up in the trees, like where a macaw or even a cardinal might be chirping. Bent beak here that I can finish off with. So artists, at this point, I did mention a marker, a black marker or a black Sharpie. We love to use those. It's a great point to time to outline your drawing, and you're welcome to keep it black and white. But if you have other materials like markers or colored pencils or pastels, you can imagine how much your, um, your drawing, too, will pick up a level of interest when you start shading it in and applying the colorful um, the colorful, th colorful things that we see in our world. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I um, look forward to seeing your work.